Anywho. Saturday morning. Clean out. Oh, sunshine. In the uh, shelter. Park this way specifically. Airing my uh, doodah. Airing those. People staring just because you've got a fucking camera out. Purpose. And super, super, super simple. Because that actually is the purpose. Listening to Moneybox live on Radio 4. Now, I not look like it, but... Delightful. I not look like it, but I's a bit of an economics expert. Over the years, I would follow... One of the very few things, six or seven years ago, I would ever bother with on YouTube. Now, from ten years ago, I had a youngster under my arm. And uh, I'm glad that I eased her into watching um, Stacy and Max Kaiser. And most of what they said over eight or nine years, they basically got cancelled, but because of a made-up association, because they they initially did their uh, extremely good constructive critique of the Western capitalist system. But Max Kaiser is a avowed capitalist. I mean, you can't get much of a free market capitalist than Max Kaiser. I actually didn't really agree with him. But superb analysis of the quite complex patterns and systems behind what you will hear on your money box live. And funny too. Yep, my little uh, underwing person. She really enjoyed it. She learned a lot from them. Now, I'm an expert. If anyone can be an expert on real economics, real geopolitical forces, I really am. And it all comes down to economics. You have the monolith of the world of politics and money. Really, it's just money. You can talk about Max Kaiser would endlessly make jibes, very rude ones, that Jamie Dimon, head of, uh, which one's head he head of? Goldman Sachs, I believe. Um, yeah, <clears throat> but your Jamie Diamonds, there are, in your top 1%, there are, there are many of them. It's wrong to personalise things, really, but they are the big, they are the juggernaut, the monolith of world capital flows and de 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 I understand it all as much as anybody can. And you have... I really do understand the following. Then you have a range of figures. Uh, one of them's called Dalio. One of them's... You have uh, the absurd Whitney Webb, who is so subtly dangerous. She's come onto the scene. Financial journalist. There are simply two powers that work on world money. First of all, you're incredibly <coughs> difficult to penetrate and know what's going on. Your top layer of the, call them the plutocrats, whatever, whatever, whatever. Call them your Davos, call them your World Economic Forum, call them whatever. Now, they don't entirely control events because you have the other thing, which is sentiment sentiment now if you'd have asked me two years ago when I was just keeping an eye on 
just out of interest. What's really happening in the world? If you'd have asked me, I would have said, absolutely do not buy Bitcoin. And that's completely wrong. Bitcoin, I, I looked up the other day. I don't have any money. I don't want any money. Bitcoin has actually carried on going up. It's really gone up the last, uh, the value of Bitcoin against leading world currencies. It's almost impossible to know, especially as you do have a kind of new kid on the block the last 10 years, which is the younger uh, app-based uh, tech. entree into this whole world of the big money it's Im virtually impossible to know and which is going to be far more driven by sentiment than previously now why don't you turn this camera on the bottom line is in terms of the sentiment you have half a dozen of your more eh, your more reliable thoughtful the, the commentators, I mean, you'll find YouTube is full of, 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 of bull necks. Oh, crash imminent! You know, they're on steroids, basically. And the whole act is like, hey, I've got special, special analytical insight and we are on the cliff edge. But then you have your more intelligent ones, your more thoughtful ones, who will be speaking of, well, the centre cannot hold uh, these indicators here. These, and, and there are there are various kind of long-term, perhaps more important indicators that are a little bit esoteric to if you don't follow it just out of an intellectual sort of. Well, it's not an intellectual; it's sociological, uh, sociological kind of wondering what really is happening with power and money. Um, yeah, the, the more intelligent, thoughtful, mature, uh, non-spiv, non-fat bull necks on steroids, uh, 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 most of them. Here's the bottom line. Those who, when they appear on a video, etc., get it several million views, and they're known as intelligent, thoughtful people, um, most of them now, or rather for the last few months, have been saying, well, the indicators, there are, the, the, the range of indicators are such that almost certainly, not for certain, but almost certainly in a year or two, there really is going to be a massive market force correction, which in and of itself is a terribly difficult concept to know what that means. Um, I mean, it, 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 you can sum it up with actually quite a good talk. I forget who it was I was looking at the day before yesterday, I think. Whereas one commentator, one analyst, no, they're not analysts. They're actually historians of money. A good historian of money was pointing out, well, in the 1970s, uh, government bonds were, uh, you didn't want to be in government bonds. They were a disaster. But then by the 1980s, the only way the pension funds, etc., uh, could make money was by putting money in government bonds. And I may have that completely the wrong way around. It doesn't matter. Uh, but these, because these are the genuine historical ups and downs and changes in world economics. Then you have an interesting chap who's come out very very authoritative sounding I could look up his name and did a chat with Sam Harris who's a complete jerk but uh, it was actually quite an intelligent conversation now this chap I'll put his name up uh, quite seems to quite intelligently and sort of seems to have Sam Harris wrong-footed to a certain extent well I didn't really think of all of this pointing out that the demographic forces in uh, Western European countries and Japan, uh, not necessarily America, are so, so now tipping towards pro productivity totally plummeting. And what we do know is that there's only a few percent in it. If things like productivity, um, base rates, etc., just change a few percent, it does actually have a, a pretty major effect. Well, <laughs> here's the thing, major. 
Now, you listen to your money box live and you'll hear thousands and thousands of people phoning in. Well, I used to have a £1,000 debt to my energy company and now it's a 2000 debt and I'm never going to be able to pay it off. Well, this you can actually by just sort of engineering your life. Uh, no, you're not going to keep your same comfortable house. Um, engineering your life such that you may even have a period of homelessness and then the best thing of all I mean Paul Lewis money box live whatever you do the first rule is keep in touch with your your uh, your suppliers what a joke I mean any sane person knows that that's almost impracticable I mean it's going to take days to get through never mind you know if you're lucky if you can get to speak with somebody who even understands what English sentences strung together such as um, well I'm officially homeless I uh, or I'm officially I have this that and the other medical situation and um, there is no conceivable way uh, my benefit money in is 800 pound a month my cost out or the other way around is more than that uh, there is simply no way I can pay this why don't we make a date for a chat in six months. I mean, these are pretty straightforward English sentences and I'm probably not even doing that very well in that one could lay out things that are crystal clear. Um, you could you could uh, tell somebody, well, I've got a, um, a charge against me from a um, criminal court uh, for getting drunk and disorderly and I have to pay £100 a month otherwise I go to jail. So that's priority. And then I have £400 a month. Uh, well, it's even here, the cheapest you can get is about £650. £650 a month rent. So, excuse me, my current uh, invalidity payments are X hundred pound uh, a month. Um, as you can see, there is a shortfall. I can't pay you a penny. These straightforward sentences, most of the bimbos that you end up speaking with on these in your kind of electric company debt management <coughs> department, they just simply can't deal with them. They, they, they don't understand them. They're, they're not able to deal, and I'm, I, I mean English now, I'm not making snide remarks saying, but you're probably going to get better communication if you are speaking with an Indian call centre at least they have some comprehension of the English language now anybody would rightly say well it's their job just to ignore you and squeeze you into paying something but when you're crystal clear A B C D there is simply no way and even I had a period of doing this in 2008, no, 2007, I ended up with an actually incorrect, massive electrical bill. I just like, no way, I mean, we went through about a year, it took about a year and a half, and I just ended up, well, I'm leaving, leaving this property anyway, the dreadful Hazel Price Grenow lied and whatever, so, um, see you in court. They never see you in court, and they only very rarely put a CCJ against you and I think CCJs really only really affect you for about three years and that this side of three years that sounds like forever but those three years go quickly enough it's no big deal it's really not a huge deal now that's all slightly messy slightly reckless but all I put this camera on to say is that it's obvious for one thing that's obvious the issues, political issues in um, Central Europe aren't going to get any better. The matters in Israel, Gaza, they're not going to, they're not going to improve much. Hey, there might be a magical ceasefire tomorrow. Um, and then there's one or two other things on the horizon. Um, China is never going to turn around and say, ah, we promise the whole world that we're never ever going to go within Taiwanese territorial waters. That's just not going to happen. That may, that situation, many international commentators say, well, especially prior to Trump coming in, or if he does come in, 
that it's quite likely China is going to make some kind of a partial move on Taiwan, which will negatively shock the whole financial system. Anyway, my point. On the one hand, if you were to be listening to Stacey and Max Kaiser uh, seven or eight years ago, ten years ago, you'd hear from them, whilst times appeared to be okay, you'd hear from them, ah yes, but this clever-sounding fundamental indicator, look at this graph, it only went to that, it only started to go up at that rate uh, in 2007, i.e. prior to the supposedly almost worst quasi-depression for 30 or 40 years. All of that's all very well, and they're rightly, and not cynically, trying to be clever and pointing out, well, you know, there really is this little problem here that, that nobody really, your financial journalists on BBC, etc., don't really understand, and so they avoid it. But, hey, this is a, this is a big deal, or could be a big deal. You've had those kind of alarms for 10 years but this time as of about the last six months the majority of more intelligent historians of economics who are trying to look for patterns that are going to predict the future and geopolitics the great majority no all of them basically admit uh there ain't any quick rescue coming over the next few years and there are so many really big things that could either suddenly start up or carry on being bad that um, almost certainly economies are going to carry on going down and one of the major things but there's so much clever manipulation of the figures. It's long been said that nowadays so many vehicles, and my vehicle may be worth 500 quid, but your average vehicle is probably worth 5,000 to 10,000. So many vehicles are on finance, and the interest rates can quickly jump up again, and that might push so many people over the edge, blah, blah, blah. We all know we've... we've you know, 1990 was, I remember 1990 very well, how quickly things just suddenly went from OK to the streets of London. Central London would just be absolutely empty. It was almost as if a nuclear bomb came along. Now, I think society's kind of changed somewhat, or rather lifestyles have changed somewhat since then, such that the average street of London, people wandering around, doing things socially on the streets of London has now has so massively increased that you're not going to suddenly see a ghost town because that really, seeing that ghost town I think it was 1990 or 1991 it was so in your face that's not really going to happen but only 5 or 10% change in overall national economy, money flow, GDP, or whatever you want to call it, does have a pretty big effect to most ordinary people, i.e. 5 or 10% of their household budget is going to be negatively affected across the board, on average. So there are going to be so many people for a year or two, at least, who are going to be worried about living totally on the edge, or quite a few more gradually, gradually falling over that edge. You want to check out my channel about how to just get by. Yeah, my my income has been, or rather my, my uh, cash flow with... Um, well, 
uh, the, the people in the bottom third who are in the working tax credit system basically we got grand over the next over the last year in or year and a half cost of living payments so we got free grand so in actual fact the things like the rates of tax credit whilst they on the face of it didn't at all go up along uh, in, in accordance with real inflation real inflation for people in the bottom third has definitely been at 20% a year because the price of the basic foodstuffs has gone up so much more than and it started and I first noted I used to live for years a couple of times a week I would buy a one pound box of fish fingers economy fish fingers from my local um, actually it wasn't much cheaper to go into Aldi or anywhere like that you could get them for about 80p if you went to Sainsbury's but the local uh, spa uh, or um, not co-op but a, a budgeon or whatever that, that had been bought at by, bought by bought by car yeah they they were one pound for two or three years that's the staple food the best cheapest okay protein for the people in the bottom third by far pound or penny per gram of just about okay protein in May 2020 they shot up to one pound 25 I mean so much for a kind society and they've never gone down and they've gone up a good deal um, since then I think probably you're looking at it about one pound 50 or 60 for 10 um, economy fish fingers. So, I mean, that's a fuck of a lot. That's okay, that's 20%. That's, that's 15%, 20% inflation per year in reality. Uh, no, it's actually it's 20%, isn't it? So, it's, that's 20% inflation. So, just, just with them. And uh, plenty of other examples of things that the people and the bottom third uses their staple foods so effective real inflation rate 20 percent those in the bottom third uh, almost all of whom are in one way or another entitled to uh, working tax credit or whatever yeah, and it's it's all got changed into universal credit but it's just the government tony blair bless his cotton socks did a terrible thing whilst it's seeming like a very good thing. In, I think it was, um, oh, about 2005, was it? No, it was earlier than that. Uh, no, it was the beginning of the 2000s. They knew that Britain is rip-off Britain when it comes to rents and, and a few other things that across Europe, on average, 10 or 20% less. So... Instead of putting the taxes up on the middle class or some or on the richer or somehow putting price controls on, instead he gave this he put he put in place this thing, the bottom third will get the tax credit system. They're pay, and, and, and there was this completely an electoral thing, like we're gonna have rent controls, we're gonna have other price controls that they managed to have to some extent in Europe. No, no, that would be so electorally disastrous for us. The Sun Daily Mail would just crucify us. Ditto putting taxes up for the rich. Or even across the board, the average tax rate, or the tax rate in Scandinavia, and they're not always the richest country in the world. It's, it's kind of 50, 60 percent. I think it's about 60 percent. So the, the number one kind of weasel words, yeah. Instead, we're not going to do those things because they would have lost so many votes. So we're going to put in place this okay system, but it's just so absurdly administratively bulky. We're going to put in this tax credit system so that the bottom third won't starve fair income but there is no way the tax credit system has kept up with this 20 percent anyway blah, blah blah point being but there's no more this crisis this cost of living government payment that's finished um last one two weeks ago you're gonna get poorer Almost, most people in the bottom two-thirds say are gonna get poorer 
So it's all in the head. It's all in the head how you respond to it. I have become 30% poorer, or yes, in the last three years. I haven't noticed. I don't care. And I'm a normal person who has three hours to themselves when I wake up in the morning, sat here thinking, what's really, what's really my life? Yeah, what's really? My life is 30% poorer. In fact, probably even 50% poorer because living in rural places, I, I worked using my little jalopy here. Price of fuel's gone up so much, I want it to go up more. It needs to go up more to save the planet. Anyway, there we go. Blah, blah. And I mean it. I mean it. I'm not joking. So, how to live super well, super well on far less. I know loads of people that have done it, but piety and earnestness, and I'm a super sensitive little zen ascetic um, littlest or minimalist. That, that's all. That, that's Nobody really wants to watch that crap which has been around for 15, 20 years. My version of crap might be a bit more useful.